living in simplicity. Simplicity, we all know. In the dictionary, it is defined as direct, clear, free of pretense or dishonesty, free of vanity, ostentation and undue display, free of secondary complications and distractions. Why living in simplicity is so important? All great spiritual teachers have told us the importance of simple life. Sri Ramakrishna said, so long as one does not become simple like a child, one does not get divine illumination. Forget all the worldly knowledge that you have acquired and become as innocent as a child and then will you get the divine wisdom. Swami Vivekananda once said, if I could just forget whatever I have learned through the scriptures. In the Bible it is said, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So the heaven signifies the ultimate goal of a human soul. What he cherishes deep within his heart or her heart. <coughs> and that can be achieved only through living a life of simplicity or becoming, becoming simple or rather in true sense being simple. We'll discuss that a little later. To lead a life of simplicity, we need to have three things. One, the first one is the clarity of our goal in life. What we want to achieve in life should be clear to us. Whether we want peace and happiness, or, or we want this name, fame and aggrandizement of our features. If we want peace and happiness, the simple way of living is a must. It depends on us. What we are we clear about what we want? And whenever there is distraction on the way and there is a chance of getting choice, are we prepared to choose the thing that will make us achieve the goal that we want. That clarity is one of the conditions to live a simple life. Another thing that makes life simple is contentment. Contentment is something, a mental quality. When a person feels that what I have achieved is sufficient to give me happiness. Contentment is a sign which says that there is no real happiness in having more. Now the present society particularly consumeristic society. It says through various <coughs> advertisements, it says to us, you are what you possess. You are what you consume. People will know if we have an expensive car, a big house, that will raise your status in society. That is the way consumeristic society wants to 
impress upon us the idea. And with that idea, having the happiness in having more, the happiness always recedes away from us. Swami Vivekananda says, you are not what you possess or what you consume, you are what you think. A man is what he thinks. So when we have an idea of contentment, then hoarding of possessions which we really do not need will drop away. And we we'll feel content in the basic needs that we have. And what we need and what we want, that is the question. Who will decide for me what I want? I will have to decide. Or what I need, that has to be decided by me. No one can dictate me. If I think I want a very expensive car, then who is going to say to you that car is meant for the transportation? It is not a part of show of your status. People won't be impressed much by the car you possess, then by, by what you are. Your thoughts, your behavior, your actions, those will be real images of yourself in the mind of others, not what you possess. And there is the third point in becoming, leading a simple life is community. How you get connected with the community. To be with oneself, acquire all the things that I wish to have, and have no concern for the community or society, that is not a sign of simplicity. A simple person will be communicated, will be in communication with other members of the community. He will feel when others need his presence, his words, his service or her service and try to help and serve others. And with that projection of simplicity, he will find real peace. So simplicity and consumption are two different things. We may have, we may need balanced, nutritious food to eat, but we may want to go in the restaurants oftentimes and eat. That's the difference between need and want. I may need a good health, but I may want to hide my wrinkles by doing plastic surgery or making the organs on my body looking more attractive by plastic surgery. What I need and what I want is has to be decided by me. If I am clear in my goals of life, then I can do that. I may need a decent means of transportation, but I may want a brand new this year's model of Mercedes Benz, Mercedes car. So that is the difference between need and want. What I need and what I want has to be decided by me. Simplicity doesn't mean that I will have the bare minimum things that we needed. Just the frugality. It doesn't mean ascetic simplicity. You have to be like an asset. Simplicity, aesthetic simplicity. You need the minimum to live a decent life, but avoid the excessive consumption and excessive possessions. And that you need to understand for that. While in communication with others, there has to be integrity, authenticity, and honesty. <coughs> what 
just was read Sri Ramakrishna's speech. One should make mouth and the words one. Man, what you think, what is inside your mind, that has to come out. That is the simplicity. That is the greatest simplicity. And this communication, there is the reflection of how much simple you are in your heart. While communicating with others, if we are not simple, we will not be able to say straightforward and see something different and may be able to hurt others through our speech. So simple way of speaking will be direct and will be never hurting others. It will be straightforward and honest. During our speech, we often tend to talk a lot about unnecessary things, about something that is not concerned with me right now. And that is wasteful speech. And in the scriptures it is said, Anya vacho bimunchata. Avoid wasteful speech. Speak what is important, what is beneficial for you and for whom you are speaking. That should give encouragement, a good thoughts, and a higher, that should impress on a higher side of life. The talking is very important and wasteful speech should be avoided. That is also a part of living a simple life. In the living simplicity, we need to understand the value of silence. That is the greatest simplicity. When we value the importance of silence, <coughs> then we know that wasting useless words is not living a, living a simple life. And silence, in the depth of silence, we come closer to our own soul, own self, which is the simplest. One writer was saying that to be simple, you need to have greater eye contact. Try to see a person through the eye, in the eyes. That is a sign of simplicity. But looking at the eyes is also, there is a difference. There should be soft looking, respect with respect and acceptance. There may be a looking contact of the eye, but there can be a hard and demanding, tight, hard and demanding layer. You look like this, not that. That is not simple, it becomes complicated. You want to see what man is thinking, what man is inside him. Not that. Simple, friendly, soft look. That is also a part of living a simple life. And there is another, the joy of work. Always becoming worried and dislike for the job that we are given. That makes our life very complicated. The love of work and finding joy in the work that we have been given is a sign of simplicity. So we need to have grow a taste and love the work that we are doing. Now let me read from some examples of how the simple life were led in the life of Sri Ramakrishna and his disciples. Let us see the needs of two Swamis, Swami Premananda and Swami Subodhananda. They were, both, they were both direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. When Swami Premananda passed away, they found his belongings consisted of one empty canvas bag, a few books including the Bhagavad Gita and one extra piece of clothing. He always dressed in a dhoti, 
a wrapper and a pair of brown sandals. That was his level of frugality, which is possible in a man who is a monk. The other is Subhadana. He was the youngest of the twelve apostles and aptly called Koka Maharaj, meaning child Swami. Once at Pelurmat, Koka Maharaj offered Swami Vivekananda a pipe to smoke just as Vivekananda had come out of his meditation. Vivekananda was so pleased with the gesture that he spontaneously said, ask for any boon and it will be granted. On further insistence, Kuka Maharaj said, grant me this day. I may never for the rest of my life miss my daily cup of and so it happened that Subodhananda Maharaj never missed his daily cup of tea, with the tea sometimes arriving just as he was preparing to go to sleep at night. But on a deeper note, think over this for a minute, that the great Swami Vivekananda was offering a boon and all Koka Maharaj asked for was a simple cup of tea. It is true that they were the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna and therefore what they had received from Thakur was unmasked. But this is also true that there was considerable <coughs> financial distress at the month in those days. And despite that, Subodhananda Maharaj only asked for a daily cup of tea as a boon from Swami Vivekananda. That was it. <coughs> During his visits to America, at the end of dinners, Swami Vivekananda would tend to excuse himself for a smoke or a walk. His devotees found a way to hold him, to quote, a very quick word from the hostess that she believed there was to be ice cream would turn him back in standing, and he would sink into his place with a smile of expectancy and pure delight, seldom seen on the face of anybody over sixteen. He just loved it, and he had all he wanted to. He particularly liked chocolate ice cream. Miss MacLeod related in her memoirs, because I too am chocolate and I like it, you would say. So many people say. Returning to the point, do not, make, do not mistake simplicity as living cheaply. Simplicity is much more than that. We have to ask ourselves how much of what we have is what we need. That is the trick question. And none other than you can define need to yourself. You may be sitting here and thinking, I live within my means, my house is not big, my wardrobe, well, maybe I could have bought fewer clothes, but it is not all that excessive, after all, by today's standards. But just see how much trash and rubbish each of us generate each day. In the name of being articulate, each of us is more verbose than we need to be. Even it takes 15 minutes to deliver our speech and get the message across, we will take a full 45 minutes to make it look important. I'm going to finish it there for 45 minutes. <laughs> Bravity is something we lack at the race. We play games at home and at work. I mean all the politics, the power plays, the ego battles, all the song and dance that goes on before anything real gets done. Far from simplicity, there is a ton of unnecessary complexity cluttering our lives. Since our minds are not yet at peace, we might have to start by creating simplicity in our surroundings. Our environments have a big effect on us. It has been quite a few years now 
that Zen living has been in vogue. It is nothing but living in harmony with one's surroundings. The colors, the shapes of the furniture, the plants, and a large sense of space. Everything is chosen carefully to create harmony deep within us. But there is only so much we can do from the outside. Eventually, we need to discipline our minds to become simple and to stay that way. In order to do so, we need to be more in control of ourselves and spend less effort trying to control others. We need to become frugal in our speech, action, and our thoughts. Let's try to take all that is unnecessary out of our lives. We cannot live excessively and hope to have a great meditation and peace of mind. In order to bring simplicity into our lives, we have to live consciously. We have to live deliberately. We have to be present every waking moment of our day. And only then, even in our sleep, we shall feel truly refreshed. Obviously, the best example before us of simplicity is Sri Ramakrishna himself. All great saints have simple, childlike nature. But Thakur seems to be foremost amongst all of them in his combination of simplicity with deep wisdom and profound spiritual experience. He used to say that one cannot realize God without sincerity and simplicity. Simplicity meaning a combination of purity and frankness. We see this even in his foremost student, Swami Vivekananda. Once accused of jealousy, Swami Vivekananda wrote, Your letter indicates that I am jealous of your new friends. You must know once for all, I am born without jealousy, without avarice, without the desire to rule whatever other vices I am born with. to forgive people whom we even claim to love the most, such as our spouses, parents and children. And perhaps we never quite succeed in forgiving an acquaintance who has done us wrong. The twelve apostles, on the other hand, were not just extremely loving, but their ability to forgive primarily stemmed from the fact that they did not know how to hold a grudge. And that comes true with the 16 disciples of Sri Ramakrishna as well. Swami Tripunati Tananda was a direct disciple of Thakur, who built the San Francisco Center. A crazy disciple blew up a bomb at his feet, causing the untimely death of the Swami. In his dying statement, the Swami said, I do not know why he did what he did. I assure you that there has been no trouble between us. I do not harbor any ill will against the man. Let this be clear. Is this any different from what Jesus said on the crucifix? Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. To forgive is one thing, but never to have experienced even the slightest amount of contempt is an entirely different dimension of existence. We do not need to get into challenging issues like having to forgive actions, big and small. Even if we look at the way the Swami had fun, we will undoubtedly get a glimpse of their simple nature. For example, Swami Vigyanananda would address Beni 
who waited upon him as Dr. Beni Madhav, M.A. B.L. L.L.D. While Beni was actually nearly illiterate. Once Swami Vivekananda and Latu Maharaj were in Kashmir together. They had rented a houseboat on the lake for a Kashmiri family. Latu Maharaj or Swami Adbhutananda was almost infamous for carrying out Thakur's instructions literally, which included avoiding the company of women. Fully aware of this, Swami Vivekananda asked the young, young daughter of the boatman to go and give Latu Maharaj a betel nut roll or palm, as we call it in India. As soon as the girl reached Latu Maharaj, Latu Maharaj jumped into the icy waters of the lake, even though he didn't know how to swim. <laughs> of course, Swami Vivekananda rushed to rescue and pulled him out of the waters. But this incident demonstrates the guilelessness of both Swami Vivekananda as well as Swami Adhutananda. I don't want to sound cynical, but you see, we seem to need new clothes, new movies, fancy dinners in an effort to be happy, even though it is possible to be happy with very little effort and without spending much money. <coughs> You must have read an article by David Irving, who writes The 17 Habits of Simple Living. Some of the habits say, every day ask yourself some question, what can I take out of my day-to-day -day make room and what matters most? Make room in your day for solitude and silence, meditation, prayer, and to attend to the voice within. Start your day slowly. Take time to center yourself before meeting the world. Get a good night's sleep. Rest before you are tired. Don't watch the news before you go to bed. Most news is designed to entertain us with drama and tragedy. Perhaps our love affair with news is a substitute for the real story of our own lives, a truth that is too uncomfortable to face at times. Find something that relieves and soothes you at the end of the day. Pick one social cause to be committed to, transcending self-centeredness by being of service to your family and community are integral parts of living simply. But spreading yourself too thin will erode it. So these are the, some of the points of developing habits of simple living, which gives us peace and happiness that we cherish. Actually, the opposite of simple is often complicated. The word complicated comes from the Latin two words, com and plicatis. Com means with, plicatis means folding. It means with folds. We make ourselves when we make many folds of us. And simple is without fold direct, straight, you can see everything. And what are the folds that we make? And what is the simple? As I said, the simple are we. Our real nature <coughs> is the most simple. And real nature is Atma, the self. And this real nature is folded into the traps of our personality. And we make it complicated. The more we forget our real nature and we identify with five folds where our real Atman is influenced, fold up body, vital force, mind, intellect, and bliss, the blissful seed are called Panchakosha or three different bodies, the gross, subtle, and causal. They are the folds that cover our real self and 
we become complicated. The more we could go near ourselves through all the practices that enlightened being asked us to do, the more simplicity will be exhibited in our life. When a person is simple, it is quite easily understandable. We understand, if I, I myself is simple, I can understand another simple person. The simple person we are attracted to him. Why were people so much attracted to Sri Ramakrishna? Or why persons are attracted to holy persons? Because they are live a simple life because they have gone near their simple, real nature, which is the simplicity. <coughs> to conclude, I'd like to relate about the sign of simplicity that Swami Jagannanda somewhere had written. Simplicity peeps through our appearance our tastes, our reactions, our movements. <coughs> our facial expressions become sublime. No more do showy dresses and positions mean to attract others appeal to us. Simplicity is revealed through our speech, which is direct, friendly, and respectful. Simplicity becomes evident through our interpersonal dealings, which is always associated with respect and love towards others. Our mental life too becomes simplified. We are not haunted by imaginary fears, exaggerated worries, and needless anxieties. Simplicity has a way of trickling down into every little thing. How we walk, talk, love, read or write. Simplicity spontaneously oozes out of us as the folds covering our simple self become weaker and weaker.